Good day lecturer, my name is Dashri Siddhartha. I'm here to present the topic forensic applications for my assignment. So here I'm going to discuss regarding the forensic and the forensic botany. So forensic is related to the application of scientific methods and techniques to the investigation of crime, while forensic botany is which deals with the application of plant sciences in solving both criminal and civil cases. The microscopic light and electron microscopy analysis of plant cells, tissues and organ can provide compelling evidentiary arguments toward the resolution of a number of legal questions. Today, several subdisciplines of plant science are being applied successfully in criminal investigations. In example, in plant systematics, it includes identification of plant species, the plant anatomy and plant ecology. Usually, the forensic applications come from combinations of these areas in a given case. So, botanical evidences are suitable for law rests upon several biological subdisciplines like dendrochronology, palynology, systematics, ecology, molecular biology, and more. Botanical evidences are significant while solving criminal cases. Forensic botany is primarily engaged in making connections between evidence and a crime. So various plants or their products can be helpful for this purpose, where pollen grains recovered at the scene or scene of crime or from the criminal or victim body, and a rare plant type present near a victim can be helpful in correlating a suspect to a victim or scene. So here, why botanical evidences are needed? Botanical evidences can be relied upon for the following reasons, where plant remains are found almost everywhere and they are being both macroscopic and microscopic, or they offer multiple sources of evidence such as pieces of wood, even as charcoal, twigs, leaves, trichomes, seeds, fruits, pollens, spores, and etc. The number and morphological diversity of these botanical evidences act as their signature to identify them, thus providing crucial information such as the season and location of crime, position of the body of the victim. In example, whether it has been moved after murder or buried, and if so, then for how long? I'm going to show a few applications in forensics. So here we have plant ecology. It has been useful in the location of the graves of missing persons. It does not matter whether the grave is deep or shallow or whether the person was clothed, encased in plastic or even naked at the time of burial. The clues for the burial site come from the necessity of disturbing the vegetation cover to dig a grave. A knowledge of plant succession patterns in the area is almost impossible to disguise from the eyes of a well-trained plant ecologist. They remain evident for at least a few years and sometimes it takes a decade or more. We also have palynological evidence which can be used to suggest where a person was killed and also to link a suspect to a crime scene. It also can be useful to identify controlled, which is illegal, plant substances even if no other plant material is present. We also have forensic botany which is a new and growing field. Many criminal investigators, medical examiners and attorneys are unaware of its usefulness because they had little exposure to botany in their educational experiences. Most forensic botanists act as private consultants in crime matters. To be accepted to testify in a court case, Forensic botanists must demonstrate that they are qualified enough to be expert witnesses. Their suitability for such testimony is judged by their experiences and educational credentials. I'm going to discuss regarding the pollen, which is a powdery biological material containing microgametophytes of higher plants released by anthers in large volumes. They are considered as one of the important botanical evidences because they are light, easily transported by wind, they can usually be traced on clothes, hair or skin, they are being prevalent in the air or may be breathed into the lungs, they decompose slowly, they also can be retrieved from millions of years old rock, they are being microscopic, where remain unseen as silent witnesses and even if visible, unlike fingerprints, it's nearly impossible to do away with them from a crime scene. Like spores, 
if you look at the picture, the picture of the pollen given in this slide, they have exine. Exine of pollen grains of each plant possesses unique characteristics and this signature can link an individual or object to a specific location. Pollen signatures may also further indicate that a body has been moved or suggest the locality where the original crime took place. Therefore, pollen is one of the most significant botanical evidences in these criminal cases. So I'm going to present cases which is related to forensic botany mostly. In the first case, once the police asked a forensic botanist to analyze some material in a glass vial that came from the trachea of a young boy who was in the custody of foster parents. He had been found asphyxiated and his foster parents claimed that he had been playing in a barn full of hay before he died. They maintained that he jumped into a stack of loose hay, sinking deep into the hay and suffocating. If he had suffocated deep within a stack of loose hay, well, he might have inhaled some fragments of straw while trying to breathe. The forensic botanist ag sorry, examined the material that was supplied, uh, supplied to carry out research with the idea that she might find fragments of the stems or leaves of grass. However, there were no fragments. Continuing the analysis, she next looked for the evidence of starch grains. These were present and were quite similar to the starch grains found in ground corn, which is used as animal feed. So it appeared that this boy had inhaled the contents of a bag that contained ground corn just before he died. The forensic botanist presented this evidence to the police and heard nothing more of this case. This was the first case. Case 2 will be a little interesting where in the 20th century, Arthur Queller, who was an expert on wood anatomy, used certain botanical evidences to solve one of the most important cases of New Jersey at the time. This was the trial of B.R. Hauptmann for kidnapping the young son of Charles Lindbergh, who was a navigation hero of the time. Dr. Queller uniquely mentioned in his testimony about the structure of wood of the ladder used by the kidnapper. Queller presented three kinds of information from his study of the ladder. Identification of the wood used, physical marks left by tools on the wood, comparisons of the wood structure. He determined that ladder was made up of following four kinds of wood, which are two types of pine, Douglas fir, and also birch. During identification procedure, he saw very thin and characteristically thick-walled epithelial cells surrounding the risen kennels in pine and Douglas fir respectively. The wood of the top left rail of the ladder clearly seen to be sawn away from some bigger piece as there were nail holes in it. Therefore, Quella notified authorities to look for more missing wooden board in any place linked with the suspect. Interestingly, Police found that one of the floorboards in Houtman's attic had been partly cut away. Further, Kuala was able to show in the court that the attic board and the ladder rail belonged to a single board as their annual rings matched exactly. And more importantly, he showed that patterns of annual rings are unique and no other random board would have an absolutely identical pattern. Thus, wood anatomical evidence ultimately proved to be helpful in convicting, convicting the suspect here in this case too. Okay, this case 3 is regarding a rape case where a young woman was raped in an alleyway in Christ Church in 1997. So, suspect was arrested and admitted being in the area. But the woman mentioned but not in the particular alleyway which is the crime site. Finally, in this case, I guess, the pollen and spore combination prove helped in convicting the suspect. So here, I'm going to discuss regarding the forensic and the forensic botany. So forensic is related to the application of scientific methods and techniques to the investigation of crime, while forensic botany is which deals with the application of plant sciences in solving both criminal and civil cases. The microscopic 